Well, what now? <laughs> what now? Uh, it seems like it's a question that I ask uh, every year after Easter Sunday. Easter Monday comes and, and I ask, well, what now? And I've, I've spent uh, so much time and, and energy on Holy Week and Easter uh, that uh, some of the things that come after uh, might have uh, slipped my mind. And so I say, what now? And then, of course, I remember that there's another Sunday coming after Easter, and, that, and that's today, uh, where we continue to celebrate uh, Jesus' resurrection. But what now? That's probably a question that a lot of us ask. Uh, maybe after shelter in place ends, uh, we're going to peek out of our doors and say, well, what now? Do we just go back to life as it was before all this happened? Or uh, are we going to uh, live into a, a new normal like we talked about in the message last week from Easter Sunday? What now? Last week in our gospel lesson from uh, Matthew chapter 28, uh, we see uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they go to, to Jesus' tomb and uh, and they go to mourn and, and, and to weep and to wail. And, and I'm sure uh, after Jesus is executed, they're, they're saying, well, what now? What do we do now? And I'm sure that's the question that was on the hearts and the minds of all of Jesus' disciples. Well, what now? He had promised us so many things, but now he's dead. What now? But then Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they actually meet the risen Jesus on, on the way back uh, to tell Jesus' disciples to go to Galilee to meet him. And they see him with their own two eyes and they, they feel his resurrected flesh with their own two hands. And, and they probably think, well, what now? <laughs> now that Jesus is uh, raised from the dead, well, what now? What does that mean uh, for us? And as a, a congregation, perhaps we might be asking what now? What, what do we do now for, uh, in ministry uh, going forward? Uh, does our ministry, does it go into a, move into a new normal, uh, as we talked about again last week? Or um, what, what do we do moving forward now in, in this world uh, that needs to hear about the grace and the mercy of God perhaps more than ever? Uh, what now? I'm sure that's uh, what the disciples of Jesus uh, had on their minds when they heard Jesus speak to them. What now? Well, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. But I'm sure there is still a collective looking around and asking, okay, but what now? <laughs> and even as you and I ask this question, uh, what now? We can go and we can look back at the great commission of Jesus and, and receive our, our guidance, receive the, the command that Jesus gives to his people as he rises from the dead and as he prepares to ascend into heaven to take up his, uh, his throne at the right hand of God so that he rules and reigns over all creation. But notice in this great commission how we see uh, Jesus, he makes a, a declaration about himself. He gives a command to his disciples, and then he makes them a promise. His declaration is, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I am ruling and reigning over all creation, over all peoples, over all tribes, over all languages, everything. I am in control. And what profound comfort that must bring profound comfort it must have brought to Jesus' disciples then and there. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. He is in control. What now? Well, Jesus is in control. And what now? Well, go and make disciples of all nations. Jesus gives the command. Continue the work that I, Jesus, have began in my ministry on earth, bringing God's rule and reign to this world. And then a promise, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. In Matthew's gospel, this is a big deal, Jesus' presence with us. 
At the very beginning of the gospel, uh, Matthew tells us that, uh, that Jesus is Emmanuel, and that means God with us. And so as Jesus is born into the flesh, this is God with us. This is God who has, has been uh, born as a human being, as a little baby who will grow up to be a toddler, to be a child, to be a young adult, to be a man who ultimately gives his life uh, for you and for me, for the entire world. But Jesus also makes the promise of Emmanuel. I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus was Emmanuel when he was born, and Jesus is Emmanuel right now, even as we sit here in front of our computers. Jesus is with us. And so as Jesus meets his disciples there on that mountain in Galilee, he answers the question for them, what now? Well, one, I'm in charge, Jesus says. And, and two, I have called you, I've commissioned you to go and make disciples of all nations. And guess what? I'm with you every single step of the way. What now? Well, Jesus lays it out for them, his disciples, and Jesus lays it out for us. Uh, his church on earth, and, and for us, uh, those who are part of his church on earth uh, at a very specific place in, in Sunnyvale, California, at St. Mark Lutheran Church. And certainly, you and I, as part of St. Mark Lutheran Church, we take up Jesus' uh, promise and command to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded us. Now, you and I at St. Mark, we have uh, chosen to articulate that in a very specific way in our, our mission statement, our, our purpose for being. Uh, and we say at St. Mark that, that we exist to connect people to the vibrant love of Jesus. This is uh, uh, just another a way to say making disciples of all nations. It's another way to say that, that we gather together to form people we form our, to be formed our, ourselves and to, to uh, form others in the likeness of Jesus, to be disciples, to be followers of Jesus. But I wonder, the question I think remains is, what now? So how do we actually go about accomplishing that mission? And I think it's important that we ask and answer that question uh, just generally to, to be a, a church that is fulfilling the mission that Christ has called us to. But it's important right now in this particular time in history as people are perhaps looking for meaning, looking for purpose, looking for something more in life because most of life has been taken away from us. Most of life during the shelter-in-place order uh, has been stripped from us. And we're left, a lot of us, with not much. So how do we go about accomplishing the mission that God has given for us? And it's, important, it's an important question that, that we ought to ask and answer. And over the next few weeks, as we continue on in this sermon series, Planted, uh, we're going to answer that question. How do we go about fulfilling the, God, the mission that God has given us, the, the great commission. So this morning, I want to introduce you to uh, three kind of interrelated ways in which we go about fulfilling that mission. And, and it's using a, an image, an image, uh, as perhaps many of you know, from the, the heritage of our, uh, our region, the Santa Clara Valley. Uh, this place, before it was Silicon Valley, it was called the Valley of Heart's Delight. And so we're going to use an image of a, a tree, a growing tree and to talk about how we fulfill uh, our mission, uh, how we fulfill uh, the, the mission that God has given us. And indeed, uh, we don't fulfill it on our own, of course. Uh, we uh, fulfill it um, through the power of the strength uh, of the risen Jesus who is with us to the very end of the age. And so it's, uh, as I said, three interrelated uh, ways. Uh, they can't be separated from each other. Uh, they, they work together. Uh, three ways that we accomplish our mission together. One is uh, rooted in Christ, uh, growing together in God's word, and then branching out in love uh, to our community and, and indeed the entire world. So how do we go about fulfilling our mission 
of connecting people to the vibrant love of Jesus? Well, uh, these three things, being rooted in Christ, growing together in God's word, and branching out in love to our community. And the key, uh, I think, here is um, uh, what the te technical term would be uh, spiritual formation, uh, who we are being formed in the likeness of Jesus. And that begins first with uh, being uh, rooted in Christ. What does it mean to be rooted in Christ? Well, it means to have our identity firmly uh, planted in Jesus. To seek our identity not in uh, what we do, not in uh, who we're related to, uh, not in uh, what uh, we own, but our identity is firmly rooted in our baptism. Because it's in our baptism, that moment when a water is splashed on us and we're baptized, and as Jesus told us to be, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's right there that God claims us to be his very own. That's our fundamental identity. And so uh, to be connected to the vibrant love of Jesus means to be rooted in that baptismal identity, to be rooted as Christ's very own disciple. And this one, it, it might be a little bit difficult to grasp because it's, uh, simply put, it's all passive. It's everything that God does for us. We see this all the time as we gather together uh, as God's people in worship. Even as we gather together right here and now, we come and we receive God's gifts for us. We receive what we often call the, the means of grace. That is the ways in which God delivers his grace and his mercy to us. So we come and, and we hear God's word of forgiveness for us. In confession and absolution, uh, in a sermon, we hear uh, God's forgiveness. We hear God's love for us. We hear uh, that Jesus uh, died for us. He rose for us, and he has given us new life. And that's where we locate our fundamental identity as people who have been saved by grace, uh, people who have been saved by Jesus. And indeed, in the sacraments, as I mentioned, uh, as, as a Lutheran congregation, we, we celebrate two sacraments, Holy Communion and Baptism. And our identity is firmly rooted in our baptism and in, in who we are um, as Christ's baptized children. Uh, but also in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we come and we receive uh, God's gifts, uh, the body and blood of Jesus, which are truly present in the bread and wine uh, for the forgiveness of our sins. Oh, unfortunately, right now, because we can't gather together in person, uh, because we can't be together to, to share this meal where, where Jesus actually deigns to, to limit himself to time and space and, and be present with us as we together share that meal, because we can't be together to do that, we rely uh, more and more uh, in this time on, on God's word and God's continual promise to us uh, that we are forgiven, we are his children. And so in this time, in this place right here and right now, and we are rooted in Christ because we know that we are God's very own uh, through our baptism in Jesus. And so we are, are rooted in Christ and we are also people who are growing together in God's word. We continue to accomplish our mission as God's people. We continue to connect people to the vibrant love of Jesus by growing together in God's word, by immersing ourselves in scripture. Because it's in, in scripture where, where God speaks to us. It's in scripture where we see uh, the gospel of Jesus laid out for us. Um, and uh, there's a, a psalm, uh, Psalm chapter one. It's... Uh, or the first psalm, it's, it's one of my favorite psalms um, because it, it talks about uh, the importance of being immersed in God's word. Uh, it says, uh, Blessed is the man um, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. So blessed is the one whose delight is in the, the instruction of the Lord, in the word of God, because he's like a tree planted by streams of water. 
you know, as a congregation, we grow together in God's word by, by planting ourselves next to the stream of living water that is uh, Jesus, the word of God made flesh. And there's a variety of ways that we do this at, at St. Mark. We gather together on Sundays for Bible study throughout the week for women's Bible study and men's Bible study. Right now we're offering online Bible studies so that we continue to grow together in God's word. And the key word there, I think, um, or one of the key words is together. We are growing together in God's word. The importance of, of community uh, in uh, this process of accomplishing our mission cannot be understated. See, when we gather together in God's word, we, we get to hear about the joys and the struggles that others are going through. We get to hear how, how God's word has impacted them and how that might impact us as well. The community, the communal aspect of it, growing together in God's word, again, is, is crucial. But we accomplish our, our mission by, by diving deep into God's word and indeed being transformed by God's word. All right, so we accomplish our mission. We, we go about connecting people to the vibrant love of Jesus by being rooted in Christ, that identity uh, in our baptism, that identity knowing that we are, in fact, God's people. It's a rock-solid identity. It can't be shaken. It can't be taken from us. We're rooted in Christ, and, and we're continually growing together in God's word, immersing ourselves in Scripture, immersing ourselves in, word, in, in his word, and being transformed by it from the inside out. And then finally, uh, branching out in love, rooted in Christ, growing together in God's word, uh, branching out in love. Indeed, just like any other uh, fruit-bearing tree that this valley used to be filled with, uh, the, the roots absorb all of the nutrients and it grows up into this mature tree and, and that mature tree bears fruit for the world, it bears fruit for others to enjoy. Just as Paul says in the book of Galatians that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, the fruit of being rooted in Christ and growing together in God's word is branching out in love to our community. And at St. Mark, we do that already in a variety of different ways. Uh, many are, are part of a group that go and serve at the Refuge. The Refuge is a, is a church uh, that serves those who are uh, homeless or food insecure, offers them a meal uh, and a time of worship and, and receiving God's word. Uh, others uh, serve at Sunnyvale Community Service, and we as a, a congregation support Sunnyvale Community Services financially uh, as they work even now uh, to provide uh, food for those in Sunnyvale who need it, uh, financial assistance for those who need uh, rent help or, or utility help, uh, and uh, they also provide uh, referral services uh, and case management services. And in fact, we as a congregation uh, last week uh, during Holy Week, we took a, a Holy Week offering and we said that 50% of that was going to go to Sunnyvale Community Services. So because of your generosity, we were able uh, to do donate $2,400 to Sunnyvale Community Services. And that's on top of the, the $2,000 that uh, we usually budget uh, to uh, send to Sunnyvale Community Services to support the work that they do. That's branching out in love to our community. Uh, Bishop Elementary School is the elementary school that's just down the street from us. And uh, unfortunately, this year we weren't able to host the family reading night uh, because of coronavirus. Uh, but we pray that we'll be able to uh, participate in that next year. Uh, I have boxes of books in my office still that, that need to be delivered uh, to them uh, when uh, school comes back in session. And so we look forward to, to blessing the children of Bishop Elementary School and their families uh, by uh, giving them a gift of, of books uh, and supporting their education in that way. So those are, are three ways that we are currently branching out in love to our community. Uh, and in just a few weeks, uh, I'm excited to, uh, to roll out uh, another way that we can branch out, uh, not just to our community, but uh, the world at large, as we uh, begin a partnership uh, with another congregation in Wisconsin uh, to support a community in Porta Bajo, uh, Guatemala. So much more information on that is coming uh, in the weeks, but we're going to have the opportunity to, to uh, uh, bless them as well and support uh, the ministry that's happening in Porta Bajo, uh, Guatemala, uh, to, to sponsor children, to offer financial assistance uh, to those um, who are also uh, struggling during this time. 
uh, with the uh, with the coronavirus. So uh, rooted in Christ, uh, growing together in God's word, uh, and branching out in love to our community and to the world. That is how we fulfill our mission as Christ Church at St. Mark Lutheran in Sunnyvale, California. Three interrelated ways uh, that, that build on each other, you see, and, and that uh, feed off of each other and that uh, never actually end. We, we're constantly um, being rooted even deeper uh, by God, uh, drawing us near to him. We are constantly uh, growing together in God's word as his spirit lives in us and among us. And we are, are constantly uh, branching out in love to our community as the, the fruit uh, that grows from, from this tree that is rooted in Christ. So what, what now? Well, what now? We're going to uh, continue through this sermon series. We're going to uh, dive deeper uh, into each of these three things, uh, each of these three ways to accomplish our mission and, and see uh, uh, how, how we do them and what that can look like for us uh, in our own lives as we are formed uh, in the image of Jesus by his spirit and how that looks uh, in, in our congregational life, how that guides us in making decisions as a congregation, how it guides us in uh, what uh, ministries we pursue and what ministries we don't pursue because they either uh, are connecting people to the vibrant love of Jesus or they're not connecting people to the vibrant love of Jesus. Uh, but this morning, uh, my goal is simply to introduce you to this language, uh, rooted in Christ, growing together in God's word and branching out in love to our community. Because through these three ways, we ourselves are formed uh, as Jesus' disciples and we uh, ourselves are sent out to uh, share that love of Jesus with others uh, and, and in turn invite them uh, to enter into uh, this community that, that is being formed uh, in God's image. So uh, this, uh, this Sunday, may uh, the peace of Christ, uh, which passes all understanding, uh, guard your hearts and minds in him. Amen.